In 2011, Fabrice joined PNG's Hall of Fame, the 24th brand inside that great organization to generate a billion dollars in sales globally. But behind the scenes, there were also some concerns from the Febreze team. Its two major competitors, Glade and Airwick, had now expanded their own lines, uh, were replicating the same advertising, and were essentially looking astonishingly similar to Febreze. And that was borne out by the research that showed that in all three cases, their 2010 advertising, there was more likelihood that consumers thought that the ad that they'd made came from one of the competitors than came from themselves. It's a classic marketing moment where points of differentiation have now become points of parity and strong brands have become commodified and genericized. And it's a particular problem for Febreze in this case because they were the premium price product and would struggle in a world where all three were perceived to be the same. And there was even worse news in the annual brand tracking. The uh, brand attribute of odor elimination, which had traditionally belonged to Febreze in the American marketplace, had disappeared in terms of strength. These days, the market was likely to think that Airwick or Glade owned that attribute just as strongly as Febreze. That point of differentiation, along with the distinctiveness of the advertising, had all disappeared into essentially genericism. And that was borne out in sales. From a very strong uh, standing point, Febreze's sales were now flagging, dropping by uh, nearly 10 points over the last three years and reaching a low point in June 2011. Something had to be done. Too often in these cases, a company will jump into large amounts of tactical investment. But fortunately, Febreze was owned by P&G. P&G literally invented brand management. They know what they're doing. So they went back to the start. And the start, for all great effectiveness, is to do proper diagnosis. Understand the market, understand the competition, understand the category, and understand your brand. And work out what the problem is, and use that to generate strategy, which will lead to tactics, which will lead to success. In the case of Fabrice, there was a, a plethora of different outstanding research methods used to provide insight. The team began with focus groups. And the focus groups revealed two key insights. First, that a welcoming home was still one of the prime directives for the target market. And a key insight, that the reactions to brad smells among these customers was far stronger and emotive than the positive reactions on encountering a good smell. Next, in-home interviews, a form of ethnography. Visit a customer in her house, talk to her about what she's doing and what she wants. In this case, again, key insights. A messy home can still be clean, but a smelly home can never be clean. And again, that importance of removing mal odors. And a great quote from one of the women that was visited. When you walk into an unappealing room, she said, you can close your eyes, but you can't turn off your nose. We'll come back to that point later. Next, deprivation research. Take Febreze loyalists, take the product off them, force them to use the competitor, and ask them after two weeks what they missed and what has upset them the most. It sounds strange, but it's a brilliant way to get at what does my target customer, my loyal client, love about the brand. And then loyalist research in which brand loyalists for all of the three main brands were pitted against each other in a qualitative meeting in which they were asked to explain why they love their brand so much and the barriers that would stop them from transferring across to Febreze. Brilliant research. Next, shop alongs. Let's follow consumers as they go to the supermarket. Let's ask them how and where and when they buy. And again, this research provided some clear insights. First, that the perception was indeed that the three major brands were all the same, and that these brands had all, in their own different ways, broken promises to the customer, so no one believed these claims anymore. Then there was the quantitative section, uh, brand tracking, which measured the attributes across a representative sample of the marketplace. This research confirming once and for all that Fabrice no longer owned the attribute of odor elimination and that on all the main attributes, these major brands were all seen as being the same. And finally, one more arrow in the PNG quiver, pre-testing. Once the team at Febreze had come up with a, a strategy and some tentative creative ideas, they were able to pre-test and check the target, the position, and the creative was going in the right direction by talking to consumers. 
It's a wonderful combination that can be triangulated together to give a real clear diagnosis of the situation. The strategy that emerged from that was that the aspiration was that Febreze was going to reverse its, its decline in sales and increase sales by 10% in the next year. The target was this 25 to 65 year old mom uh, who wanted the insurance that her house was going to be clean and fresh. The position, Febreze makes even the filthiest place smell nice, no matter what they look like. So again, not necessarily about making things smell beautiful, but about removing those mal odors that can get in the way. And then finally, two core marketing objectives. First, reclaim the ownership of odor elimination uh, for our brand. And second, achieve at least a 71% level of brand attribution for the new advertising. No more situations where no one recognized that this was a Febreze ad. We want almost three quarters of the market the next day to know that that ad, I can recall it, and I know which brand it came from. So the ad that started it and a series of brilliant campaigns was set in an apparently smelly environment in which blindfolded consumers were asked to enter uh, and work out exactly where they were. It's one of the most famous and iconic ads of the last decade. Starting today, Febreze will be conducting a series of experiments with real people right off the street. Meet Susan and Erica. We asked them to be part of our first experiment for Febreze fabric refresher. They agreed. So I've got three cushion cash. Oh, I feel it. You I got it? Yeah. I never know. <laughs> yeah. If you guys can just sort of take some deep breaths. And tell me what you smell. Floral. Light floral. Lilac. Maybe even a little bit of citrus. It's like when you have fresh laundry. Even a little bit beachy. Being outside, fresh lawn being cut. Wispy white curtains. Okay, take your blindfolds off. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Where? Hello? Come to this couch as soon as we sat down. And I wanted to see Fabrice. I said to you, oh my god, Eric. Join us on Facebook for more experiments as Fabrice sets out to make everyone breathe happy no matter what. YouTube videos were also used to prove these weren't actors and this really was a genuine experiment. Facebook video was used as fans were asked to nominate their most smelly things in their lives and then videos using Febreze to remove the odors proved that the product really worked. And then there was an extremely clever sponsorship strategy. Febreze looked for the smelliest events in America. For example, the Solstice Yoga in Times Square, it's a very smelly experience, uh, was sponsored by Febreze. And on the other side of America in California, the sponsorship of the Gilroy Garlic Festival, another incredibly smelly event. The clear message was that Febreze could remove these malodors. Important to link it back to point of purchase and the campaign, again, uh, connecting to the actual place where the product was sold. The results, spectacular success. First, for the first time, Febreze was able to incredibly dominantly associate its brand with its execution, while its other two competitors still struggled with that attribution challenge. And equally importantly, of people that had seen one of the new ads, 84% of those consumers attributed odor elimination as an attribute that belonged to Febreze and not to competitors. It had started to win back its differentiation. Not surprisingly, we also saw a rebound in sales. And quite correctly, and in fact a little bit miserly, I would say in my opinion, uh, the campaign was awarded a silver effie in 2011. It should have got a gold. And later on, another gold, uh, sorry, another bronze and another silver. The lessons we take from Febreze. You visit your local doctor, you walk into his surgery, he turns around and looks at you and says, chemotherapy. You would be worried because he's jumped straight to a solution before diagnosing the problem. Learn from that. Great marketers like P&G spend time understanding the issue with diagnosis before moving on to strategy, tactics, and execution. Find time to understand the problem, and that can often be difficult, but it's crucial. Use qualitative methods to understand what is going on uh, and to understand what the key drivers are, and then quantitative methods to measure them, get magnitudes, representation, and causality. Qual drives quant. Remember the power here of loyalist research. It can be a crucial insight to ask loyalists why they love the brand. And never forget that you can't solve a problem that you don't first understand. Visit the EFI's website for a database of all their amazing case studies. And come to Marketing Week for more videos in this series and information on the mini MBA in marketing.